real cases before a real judge. Plaintiffs Melissa Hyatt, her husband Todd, and their daughter Madison say the defendant's son admitted to stealing Madison's phone. And although Madison got the phone back, they say it was destroyed. They're suing for the value of the phone. Defendants Lewis Everk and his son Drew admit that Drew agreed to hide a stolen phone for his friend. However, he insists he had no idea the phone belonged to Madison. Drew says he is not to blame for stealing the phone or damaging it. But after this incident, he was expelled from school. All right, tell me what happened. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to just let you know, Your Honor, that this case is more about the principle of being a parent, about stepping up to the plate and, and taking on your parental liability. Um, Drew admitted to stealing our daughter's cell phone, was expelled from school for it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I tried to... Why don't to we talk about that first? Okay. Uh, who wants to tell me about that? You? Sure. It was your phone? Go ahead. Um, well... Normally, like, we put our backpacks down, like, at a bench where every kid does, and I went to go get lunch with my friends, and I came back, my backpack was gone. It was by the wall where Drew hangs out, and I went over there, and my phone was missing from my backpack, and the administrator came over to me and, like, asked me what was wrong, and I told him that my phone got stolen, so um, he told me to go write a witness report, so I did, and when I was walking back, someone told me that they saw Drew running down the hallway with pair of pants in his hand and he threw them at Kyle who in the pair of pants had my phone in it and then I got to PE whose pants were then why were they off <laughs> <laughs> I don't know well, somebody was streaking <laughs> go ahead so then I went to PE and Drew came up to me and said I'm your friend I would never hurt you never do anything to steal your phone I know where it is and I'll give it back to you after PE when I was walking out to practice, um, my friend came up to me and said, I, Kyle has your phone. Um, Drew gave it to him when he threw the pants at him and told him to keep it. And then he came into my house and brought me my phone. Kyle is you all's mutual friend? Yeah. Yes. We have a witness statement stating Kyle's information also. All right, like. and Drew gave it to Kyle. Yeah. Did Kyle give it to you? Yeah. So you have your phone. Yeah, but when I got my phone, it wasn't working. The camera was out. Uh, all gotcha. the insides were out. Oh, None right. of it worked. We also gotcha. have a document that proves that from the Let's Genius it, Bar please. of the iPod. Yeah, man, you want to tell me your side? Yes. Um, a friend of mine approached me at lunch, and he, uh, he told me that he had a phone that he didn't want to uh, get caught with, and that if I could hide it for him, and I said, yes, I could. And this is when I found out that it was Maddie's phone. Everyone was coming up to me saying, hey, Maddie had her phone stolen. I said, well, Maddie's my friend. I'd get it back for her. Your Honor. You shouldn't have accepted it in the first place. That was your mistake. When you accepted that, you became the caretaker. And anything that happened to it thereafter, you were responsible for it. And if it was someone else involved, then you were jointly responsible. And they have the right to sue either both or one of you, and they've chosen you. Can I just mention really quick? Yes. Um, when Drew was interviewed by the police department, um, he was asked if anyone else was involved, and he said no. He took sole responsibility, and that's the only reason we're taking them to court today. If someone else was involved, of course, he would have wanted both parties to be responsible for it. But Drew stated in his... his Is that true, sir? No, it was not true. I actually did state that um, my friend was involved, the one who actually was in, the one that took the phone. I, to I told, I wrote that in my witness statement that he was involved. Okay. And that boy still goes to Madison School. Drew was expelled from school for it. So the you boy were that he's mentioning. for this? Yes. Okay. You want to speak, sir? Yeah, well, I want to speak to that. He wasn't suspended for stealing his cell phone. He was suspended for receiving the stolen property. Um, he's obviously nervous. He's never been in a courtroom before. He's 15 years old. But he wasn't the one who would originally take the cell phone. The cell phone was given to him was taken from his locker, was eventually returned back to the rightful owner, and it was damaged along the process. So I was, this is the first time I've met these folks. Never seen them, never talked to them, other than one time on, on telephone, and that's it. Okay. Why do you say he needs to learn parenting? Uh, because I have document right here from the emails I sent him and the Facebook message. And, and did he respond? He I didn't respond to my, tech, or to my emails, and I finally found him on Facebook, and I sent him a message there threatening, unfortunately, that I'd take him to court, and immediately my phone rang, and he spoke with me, mentioned how, you know, his 
son and him didn't really talk. He didn't live with them, lived with his sister or grandmother. And, you know, he just, Drew was always getting in trouble and he would look into it and get back to me. He's here today standing with him. I know, and that's fabulous. Maybe this will help them become closer. Wouldn't that be a fabulous thing if that yeah, took place? How do you know they're not close? Yeah. How do you know they're not close? So, um, well, just from what Mr. Everett spoke to me on the phone. Oh, he was just telling you that so you didn't have to pay this bill. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, I don't know him. He told you he didn't know him. <laughs> you told him you was going to sue him. You didn't tell him you were suing the son. He said, I'm going to sue you, Mr. Everett. He said, oh, well, I don't know him. Whoever you're talking about, he stays with my sister out of town and he's a hoodlum. I don't know. Go after him. <laughs> <laughs> but he's here today. He's standing up with his son. All right, young man, you are liable because once you accepted that phone and you knew it was someone else's property, you became a caretaker. Secondly, you were um, disciplined about it and no one else was. And receiving stolen property is a crime. All right. Judgment for the plaintiff, $535. How are your grades? His grades pretty good? He's doing better. He's picking right. up, yeah. You know him now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, have a good day. Judgment for the plaintiff. I just, I'm glad that it ended up working out, and I really hope the judge is right. You're here with your son today, and I hope you end up being his dad and taking responsibility and spending more time with him instead of doing all the club going you, you promote and do. And I hope you spend some time with him because from my understanding, you got two great sons and you got to learn. I have three great sons, full oh. custody, take full care of them. You do. And they're doing just fine, thank That's you. That's fabulous, so they don't live with your sister anymore? Great. No, no they don't. Good. I'm he doesn't have a mother and she was trying to give him a little motherly guidance. Well, wonderful. So I'm glad you know the full story.